had this wonderful mix of old industrial buildings and we wanted to preserve that. And even where there were new buildings, we suggested they have some kind of inherent industrial character to them, which might be material, it might be color, it might be huge doorways or multi-pane windows or whatever. But that we felt that continuity of industrial character was important because it, it in fact, is what makes the place unique from some other part of the city. When we did Granville Island, we took a lot of chances. We were breaking rules, and there were a number of uh, experimentations that took place there, particularly, for example, in the design of the streets. We did things that had never been done in North America before. In, in the mid-70s, uh, a lot of your access to the water was via beaches and parks. There wasn't anything urban or even industrial that you could get to to get access to the water. So that was another really exciting thing that we, I think, realized immediately. Granville Island has been a huge influence for the development of Vancouver. It really was Granville Island that set in motion the fact that people can live and work in a downtown environment and in a very successful way to be connected with the shoreline, with the seawall, to, to mix recreation, housing and shopping together. course of COP26 in the past two weeks we've been hearing an awful lot about sea level rise and I know this is a preoccupation of yours. This is your main focus at the City of Vancouver. Um, tell me what we're in for. Right, we are expecting about 50 centimeters of sea level rise by 2050 and then about 100 to 1.4 meters of sea level rise by 2100 and yet we know that there'll be more sea level rise coming perhaps 200 centimeters by 2200. Um, when it comes to mitigating the overall impacts of climate change, does this feel like a defeat? I think it feels like a challenge. I mean, it's irreversible. Sea level rise is here with us, so we need to do something. This opportunity to adapt is a really great chance for us to change things, to make our shorelines, um, you know, more suitable for canoe culture, for um, more hospitable for forage fish. We have herring in False Creek, so we can make, you know, a home for them while protecting ourselves, our critical infrastructure, and things like the, you know, the roads that keep our businesses, you know, running. It started, it started actually in in the time that we were that we were um, documenting over there, it was this transition actually from the Portuguese to the to the to the English, um, and we were looking specifically at European colonization that had constructed an island city out of an estuary, and in that transition from the Portuguese to the to the English, um, if you if you um, you may be aware actually that it was the gift of an island. Uh, together with Tangiers, I believe, uh, as part of a dowry. Um, and, um, and, and then it led to uh, an amazing search for this island. What is this island? And so it gave us a fantastic starting point of the birth of an island city and, and the transformation of an estuary into, into what became the island city of, uh, of Bombay. Uh, it is actually quite hilarious to read that, uh, that transition from, from Ireland to Asia because uh, the British walk across actually the low ground, you know, when, when waters are low, and they claim much more land than the Portuguese apparently gave them. So the Portuguese viceroy wrote to, the, to his king saying that here we have people who are taking more than they are given. And they said, well, we are taking an island because we are walking as far as we can walk is an island, but they were walking in low tide. So that sort of set up uh, the ground for our investigation at that time of how an island city was, was sort of born. <laughs>